Hey, hi, how are you? My name is Phil. Welcome back to Destiny 2. And today we're talking about more in-game content. That's typically what I care about in this game as far as like videos and such are concerned. So that's what I'm making videos on. We're talking about Grandmaster Nightfalls today. As you can see, I now have the Gilded finished title for the season, which means I've done all of these. I, in fact, did most of these twice because I didn't actually have Conqueror's Discipline finished to refinish the seal. Because I had never gotten Conqueror the second time since the very first season because I just... Stopped playing GMs for a couple of seasons, which happens. But as you can see, I have all of them done. I try and find a way to prove to you that I've done them all multiple times, but unless I want to copy-paste videos of Twitch VODs, I can't do that. But regardless, let's just I'm just going to talk quickly about like stuff that's important. Number one is that, if possible, make your gear be 1560. And if not possible, you need to be minimum 1575 power with your weapons as high as you can get them. Weapon power level increases how much damage they do. 1575 is the minimum you need to be to get in there in the first place. If you're below 1575, the game doesn't let you in. That's just the general gist of it. Uh, personally, I played Warlock through all of them. I used essentially two different builds. There's an asterisk on that because one time I had to play Chaos Reach, but that build doesn't matter as much. Uh, I'll be talking about what I used with my Controverse build for now, and I'll talk about what I used with my uh, Solar Well build afterwards. Now I'm basically going to talk about the controversy and the like weapons of choice that I chose. First of all, because they brought back true burns to Nightfalls, uh, your heavy weapon, I recommend either a linear fusion that matches the element, so like threaded needle for when it's void, tarantula for when it's arc, and cataclysmic for when it's solar, or a rocket launcher that can match the element, like Ascendancy, Gyalorhorn, or honestly any of them. I don't remember all their names off the top of my head, but if you have a s rocket with pretty powerful damage boosting perks and it is the right element to match the strike that you're in I recommend possibly considering it because the 25% damage boost that you get applying to that weapon can be insanely good a frenzy boosted threaded needle hits incredibly hard in void based strikes if I ever get rampage off of my tarantula it hits like a freaking freight train in arc based strikes that's just what I recommend for your heavy Sometimes you change it up a little bit, but on average I'd say linear fusions and rockets are the best bet because you can use them at a safe distance. Speaking of stuff being used at a safe distance, let's talk about the number one kinetic for any nightfall that has anti-barrier champions, the Arbalist. It ignores all element shields because of the change they made to it fairly recently. Um, because of its intrinsic perks that it has. I forgot it, where they... I forgot if they even put it on the card anymore. No, they didn't. I don't, I don't see it anywhere. Am I blind? All they say is compounding force. The fire slugs that causes massive damage to combatant shields. What that actually means is fire slugs that will instantly break any combatant shields, no matter the element. So no matter the element, this will one-tap its shield off it. So it is always useful. And as well as the fact that if you hit a headshot against a barrier champion with it, it will always one-shot it. If you have the catalyst done, it automatically refills your magazine, and disruption break makes it take more kinetic damage, so you pop its shield, it does magazine refill, and you do more damage with it. Arbalest is just insanely good in every single situation you could possibly find for a GM Nightfall that has anti-barrier champions. If you don't have one with its catalyst finished, finish the catalyst, infuse it to max, use it in GM Nightfalls, it is that good. Other options, if you don't have it or you don't need to run anti-barriers and you just want like a longer range, to a degree, weapon that you can use to just kill stuff, and something like Birthwise of the Vile where you don't need anti-barrier, I recommend stuff like Wither Horde, uh, Izanagi's Burden, Succession, or the Seasonal Kinetic Sniper Rifle. I suppose it's Stasis, it's not Kinetic, but that's beside the point. Or maybe just a Blinding GL to help control adds. Depending on the strike will depend on your weapon, however, I cannot recommend Arbalest high enough if you're using anti-barrier stuff. Unstoppable weapons are kind of a toss-up, it's whatever you have access to. Glaives have their uses, because you can run suppressing glaive mods on them, and that's really useful in the light blade strike to suppress the guardian knights, but... Other than that, they're not great. I only recommend using them for unstopping that one strike because of the suppressing glaive for the light bearer knights. I highly recommend the Raid Pulse Rifle. It can roll some crazy good perks. It's Arc Element, which just m makes it work in a lot of the strikes this season. And it runs unstop. Hand Cannon-wise, if you have a Palindrome, fantastic. If you have a Nation of Beasts, that's Arc and Unstop, fantastic. 
the primary slot here is kind of a free-for-all of whatever matches the strikes element. Um, if you're using a energy primary, which I typically recommend because you want to match elemental shields. Uh, one standout energy primary set, and I do mean set because it is three of them, are the exotic bows. La Monarch, Trinity Ghoul, and Tiku's Divination. I recommend Tiku's the most because it's the best at ad clear among the three of them, uh, on average, because you don't need to get kills to get it started like you do with Trinity Ghoul. But any of them are always going to be a good option if it matches the strike's burn, or even if you just need a certain elemental shield for a strike, or a certain type of elemental damage to break elemental shields for a strike. They're not the greatest things in the world for actually breaking anti-barrier. I only recommend it uh, in addition to someone else on your team running Arbalest, or maybe running uh, Scout Rifles, so that you can plink down shields together. But overall, it's okay. It's mostly good for clearing adds out. Um, another honorable mention, I suppose, of weapons to use is Divinity. Divinity is just as good as it's always been. If there are overloads in a strike, Divinity is never a bad choice. Just straight up, Divinity is never a bad choice if there are overload enemies inside of a strike. It is just really good. It causes a giant bubble that makes enemies take more damage. It's arc damage, which helps in certain strikes, like, say, Fallen Saber. Although Fallen Saber has a little asterisk in that Risk Runner is insane because it produces arc damage taken. There's an arc damage buff on the Fallen Saber strike, and it can run overload SMG, so... Risk Runner has an honorable mention specifically for Fallen Saber, the way that uh, Glaives have an honorable mention specifically for the Light Blade. That's kind of it, though, really. Um, I just used a Controverse build in my Warlock when I was doing it. Grenade Kickstart or at least 7 Discipline. Using Chaos Accelerant, Feed the Void, Echo of Undermining, Echo of Persistence, Echo of Expulsion. I would use sometimes Font of Might, but typically just Reaping Wellmaker, Elemental Ordinance, Time Dilation, and Well of Tenacity. I would typically actually rock two Wells of Tenacity on this build, just for the highest amount of damage resistance as I could. It's probably going to be a little cut in the video here when I show off my Solar Warlock build. This is typically what I would do for my Solar Lock. I would run Seeking Wells, Double Harmonic Siphon, Elemental Time Dilation, Grenade Kickstart, and then whatever champion mod I needed to. Uh, the chest piece mods in my Phoenix Protocol would change as necessary for the strike. I typically had Concussive Dampener and Thermoshock Plating, though sometimes I would use Sniper Resist Thermoshock Plating, depending on the strike. Uh, Reaping Wellmaker, and then depending on the strike, I, would ch I could sometimes add in Rocket Launcher Scavenger, but... I would also have Inferno Whip Up and Well of Tenacity there to go with Reaping Wellmaker and the currently unseen Bountiful Wells because all that together makes two Seeking Wells that come back to your party and for you give you a solid boost of damage resistance. Sometimes the Tikus would swap out with Risk Runner for Fallen Saber, uh, but on average this is what I would run specifically for Well Lock. It worked really well in my opinion, pun intended. And it's just an overall solid choice for how I built my Warlock for GM Nightfalls. Overall, though, GMs weren't too terrible this season. Uh, Lightblade has a just giant asterisk on not too bad. It's a really frustrating strike because of the sheer amount of randomness in the boss room. There are static spawns for enemies on when they spawn, but where they spawn is random, as well as the boss's attack patterns are random. So it can be a little bit of a frustrating experience. Outside of that, the glassway is the glassway that it's always been. If you can take things slowly, it won't be too difficult. Scarlet Keep got a lot easier when they removed the massive knockback. Arms Dealer is Arms Dealer, just don't get hit by solar damage. Fallen Saber is the same as always. Don't die on the final drop down to the boss room, like I've done several times. Breathless of the Vial is probably one of the easiest ones of the season, but that is mostly once you get used to how it functions. Honestly, I'd say don't even bother to use well. Uh, I'd mostly just focus on ad clearing supers that your party should bring. I'd say uh, Ursa Furiosa Titans are probably your best defensive bet, and Warlocks should probably stay on Controverse or Hell. Uh, technically speaking, Chaos Reach worked just fine. There's lots of instances where massive piles of ads spawn at once, and being able to just blow them up with a dunk, a tether, or uh, just a grenade from your Warlock, because Controverse grenades are really powerful, is your best bet on how to do it. 
Um, hopefully, just a few of these random tips and tricks will help you. If you take nothing out of these videos, just know Controverse Holds on Devour Lock are incredibly powerful. Run it with Devouring Depths for massive value on your dunks. Bring an Arbalust. That's it for the video. Thanks for watching, hanging out, and I hope to catch you in the next one.